Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. So today I want to talk to you guys about a very special group of Force users who worked for the Empire, and no, they aren't the same. So according to the Star Wars Expanded Universe, 40 years after the Battle of Yavin, the Second Galactic Empire, or the Fell Empire as it was known, was founded from the Imperial Remnant. Its leader Jagged Fell believed in order and stability, but also recognized the many problems of Palpatine's empire. Fell was kind of like a benevolent dictator. During his reign, he got rid of institutionalized xenophobia in the Imperial military. So he had all sorts of random aliens becoming stormtroopers. And he even embraced the light side of the Force. His wife, Jana Solo, daughter of Han and Leia, made him see the benefit of having Force users on his side. So it was his idea to come up with a new faction of Force users that were loyal to him, known as the Imperial Knights. Although sometimes referred to as Imperial Jedi, Imperial Knights were not truly Jedi. See, they served the Emperor first and foremost, and it was through him that they served the Force. The only time they were allowed to disobey the Emperor was if he fell to the dark side, in which case they were duty-bound to bring him back to the light side or destroy him. Their training through the Force focused heavily on controlling one's emotions. Less ideologically bound than the Jedi, the Imperial Knights were willing to sacrifice innocent lives for the greater good. The Imperial Knights also didn't spend their time meditating and contemplating on the deeper meanings of the Force. They saw the Force simply as a tool, but one that they deeply respected and would never use out of anger or selfishness. Because of their beliefs, the Jedi's considered Imperial Knights as Grey Jedi, and the Sith considered them as weak amateur users of the Force. The first members of the Imperial Knights were drawn from existing Force users already in service of the Empire, along with Jedis who had abandoned the New Jedi Order. Later on, Force-sensitive children would be drafted into service. The training, while harsh, was not cruel. Students were trained as not only Force users, but also as soldiers, and were proficient in all manners of small arms, heavy weaponry, and vehicular combat. The highest ranking Imperial Knights were designated the title Master. These Masters would make up the command structure, for the Imperial Knights Order. Every Imperial Knight was allowed to have one apprentice, although this practice wasn't as prevalent as apprenticeships were in the Jedi Order. The Imperial Knights were equipped with standardized lightsabers that emitted a white blade. They were symbolic of the Order's unity and lack of individualism. Each member of the Imperial Knights created their own lightsabers using synthetic crystals created through a process pioneered by Palpatine. These lightsabers were also modified so they could work underwater. The Imperial Knights were outfitted in red armor that was made of a similar material as Darth Vader's armor. One of the key features of this armor was a pair of Cortosis gauntlets worn by each knight. Cortosis was a metal that was capable of disabling a lightsaber on contact for several minutes. So guys, if you want to learn a little more about the Imperial Knights, check out the Star Wars Legacy series. It takes place about 100 years after the uh, war versus the Yuuzhan Vong, and it heavily features the Fell Empire along with the Imperial Knights. And guys, let me know what you think about their philosophy. Do you like it? Is it kind of cool? Do you think they're onto something? And uh, as usual, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome content. And if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.